This is Miami Beach, golden playland in the sun, exhilarating, sensuous, terribly expensive. It is some of the highest priced real estate in the world. Few cities so garishly display their wealth. Miami Beach, toasting oven for those who fly south in the great seasonal migrations, a healing spa, fun city. A city of mink-draped women and sleek cars of sculpted steel and silver. It pulses with exciting music. There is elegant service, gourmet food, and vintage wine at the edge of a sparkling sea. This also is Miami Beach. South Beach. Warehouse for the aging, the forgotten, the infirm, or who pick through garbage cans for food or anything that they can sell or trade. It is an early morning ritual in the back alleys of South Beach, this search before the garbage trucks come. The tourists do not venture to South Beach. In a society that worships youth and fun and money, we do not like to come face to face with old age or pain or poverty. It is a mirror we would rather avoid this at our eventual selves. Yet there is great strength and laughter here, courage and love and a fierce tenacity for life. South Beach, a ghetto in the sun, a place where old people and old values are making a lonely final struggle. South Beach is where Miami Beach began. This is the rich tourists came to spend the winters of the 1920s and 1930s. The bigger, gaudier hotels north along the ocean weren't built until after World War II. That's when South Beach slumped out of style. The old hotels installed hot plates in the rooms and called them efficiency apartments. Retiring to Miami Beach or sending Mama here to live was not exactly as glamorous as the picture postcards made it seem. South Beach has a special flavor about it. It has the sights and sounds, even the smells of immigrant neighborhoods in New York or Chicago or Detroit, the fish markets, the little barber shops, the kosher delicatessens, the bakeries, people shouting at each other in foreign tongues, fruit stands, and always a lot of people on the sidewalk, on the street. The people who retired here came from old neighborhoods in the north. More than half the people of South Beach are older than 65. Children of peasants, craftsmen, shopkeepers, people who fled to America in the early 1900s to escape persecution or hunger in Eastern Europe. Many have now come full circle. Mrs. Sarah Bauer lives in a one-room apartment in this building at Washington Avenue and 3rd Street. I'm alone. The one room, this is my bedroom, this is my living room, this is my kitchen. Mrs. Bauer is 84. She came here from Yonkers, New York, to live on her Social Security check of $105 per month. Half the people here live on less than $150 per month. <laughs> Mrs. Bauer's granddaughter helped her decorate her room, and compared to others in the same building, it is luxurious. Each Friday, she cooks a pot of soup with a chunk of meat in it. That is her basic menu for the entire week. She warms up a little each day, stretching the soup until the next Friday. Cream of wheat helps break the monotony of her diet. How much do you get from Social Security each month? A hundred and thirty-five and thirty cents. And how much does rent cost? A hundred dollars. So that leaves you $35? $35.30. How do you live on $35.30? You must live like that. How do you do it? I don't know how. Sometimes my children give me something, you know, she brings something to her food, some chicken she bring me, just for me. Uh, you think I get uh, the $35,000, $135,000, is all right, for the month? What do you think? I don't think it's not enough. 
What do you do with the money? How, how do you spend it? I spend it. Per meat. A little needle meat. Cost a hundred... Uh, how much is? A dollar, the 79 chop meat. I want another piece of meat. It's two dollars. How can you leave me two dollar pound meat? The other one. Do you have any money left for anything besides food? No, no, no. What about Just clothes? But clothes. I got clothes from the fall. I don't buy clothes, no shoes, nothing. The struggle for food is a physical as well as a financial ordeal. Two out of every three people on South Beach have no car and no access to one. They must walk to the store each day because they can only buy what they can carry. Two wire pull carts are the standard vehicle for South Beach. Every morning, 60 to 80 people line up outside this grocery store before it opens. Inside, the day-old bread is two cents cheaper. Bruised and overripe fruit is half price. But you must be there early. The prices go up every week. That's the most important thing. Not how we sit to shop. How we can make, any, make out of our social security. Yeah. Ten cents a quart milk for here. Then Everything ten goes ten. up. Ten ten ten. Ten. 69 cents over your 79 cents. Some mornings an old man told me they are like sharks tearing at each other, fighting for the stale bread. People don't usually eat their fruit uh, raw. They, they cook it up and they cut away the bad spot. They, they make it do. So they like uh, to get the stuff because it's cheaper? It's, it's half price usually or less. You have people who bruise fruit and then try to intentionally? So intentionally, be... oh sure, oh sure. That happens all day long. They bring it to you and say, can I have it cheaper? Right, right, right. Well, if we see them bruise it, we uh, we don't give it to them naturally, but eventually somebody ends up with it. Shoplifting is an increasingly serious problem for food stores on South Beach. If you watch closely, in some of the following film, you will see a woman putting onions in her... The film was shot without her knowledge. I asked Vic Liebman what the store does when it catches a shoplifter. If they're real old, we just take the merchandise away from them and scold them and ask them not to do it again or take their business elsewhere. But if they're uh, uh, chronic shoplifters and we catch repeaters, then we uh, prosecute them. So we, all, we all keep our eyes open. What is the favorite deal? Anything small, whether they need it or not, that they can put in their, in their purse or in their pocket.